What are your thoughts on Jerron Ennis? He can fight his ass off. He's the size of a middleweight. He's got welterweight, junior welterweight hand speed. He's got power of a middleweight, and um, he's very big. And um, he, um, he he judges range and distance very well. And um, he's, he's going to have a fan, unless he's got some kind of flaw, like a bad chin, because we haven't seen him get hit yet, or he's got some kind of character flaw where he doesn't have any heart. And when he going gets rough, he gets tagged and and uh, he falls apart because we haven't seen him get hit. Um, and I'm not saying he's I'm not saying those two things are wrong with him, but those are the two things that are left. And he's he looks like the real deal to me. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I I was in Philly recently. I had a chance to watch him do a little bit of sparring and you know kind of get a feel for him and his dad and how they are like in their day to day lives in the gym. And it, it, it seems like they are what people say they are. And I was talking to his dad, Bozzi, and, and, and Bozzi Ennis was saying that, uh, you know, Boots is a better switch hitter than Crawford. I wanted to pick your brain. What do you think about, like, Ennis as a switch hitter in comparison to Terrence Crawford? Until until he fights the top guys, like Terrence has been fighting for an awful long time, I, I give Terrence a, a, a very big edge right now. But that doesn't mean that Boots can't be that guy. It's just that he hasn't fought those top fighters to say to say that yet. Yeah, and, and and with the way it's looking, it might be a little bit of time because you know he the division can't really move the way it needs to move until Crawford and Spence do what they got to do and fight. Yep, yep, yeah. I agree. But don't forget one thing, everybody: if Crawford doesn't, if Crawford decides not to fight Spence, there's not enough money, or he doesn't get the rematch clause, or whatever, Spence has got to fight Ennis because that mandatory is due in the IBF. Okay, mm -hmm. and if not, he's got to give up the title. So that's an awful lot of leverage for Terrence Crawford. <laughs> yeah. So, so if we if we don't get yeah, that, that that's that's a great point because if we don't get Crawford versus Spence, which by the way, I know you, I know you you tweeted about it a number of times, and I'm pretty vocal about it myself. It's like doesn't really seem like we're much closer to Crawford versus Spence uh, today than we were a week ago. <laughs> no. We're not. It's all horseshit. It's all happy horseshit. Do I think they're heading in the right direction? Yeah, but Spence hasn't sent uh, Crawford a contract. Why would Spence doesn't? Spence is a fighter. He's not sending anybody a contract. It's ridiculous. Yeah, the, 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 these guys have teams and things that handle the business for them. Ask Marlon. He's got another question. He's still got the same question. We answered that one already. Tell him they put. Ask another question. Which one, the Mikey Garcia one, or which one? No, the, Marlon. Uh, he's got the edit oh, yeah. question up. Yeah, I, yeah. I tell you, I, I, have to, I left it on the screen. Okay, okay. Uh, Mar Marlon also wants to know from you, what are your thoughts on Dea Benavidez, and who would you like to see him fight next? Well, my thoughts are that he's a, that he's not, not a controllable guy. He failed weight one time. One time he, he, lost, his and he lost his title. One time he failed because of uh, cocaine in his system. And um, I think he's an unruly guy. I think he's a very good fighter, and I think he should knock out uh, um, and get rid of Plant next. Yeah, because Caleb Plant's been running his mouth. He said yesterday, you know, Dave Benavidez and Jamal Charles, they can't fuck with me. No. Well, listen, David Benavidez will walk him down like he doesn't even exist. <laughs> I hope we get it because, like, them two were supposed I, I thought those two should have fought in, in early 2020 when right after Caleb beat Figer Boots, before Canelo was even a thing. I think they should have unified titles. But, you know, PBC, they want to yeah. marinate and overcook, and and now yeah. their careers are, like, heading nowhere quickly. I mean, Plant made his money against Canelo, but, you know, Benavidez, he just been fighting these 54 and 60 pounders, talking about he's the Mexican monster. Who who is David Benavides? Yeah, like he's been fighting like Kyron Davis and David Lemieux and Ronald Ellis, yeah, sixty please, pounders. And please, please, please! Oh my God, come on! He's tailor made for Canelo. He walked right to Canelo. He's tailor made. Canelo had problems with people because he's a, he's a mover and a big guy and a mover. This guy's not a mover. Yeah, so you you think you, you think, you think Canelo right Canelo's wheelhouse? That's that's what I'm saying. Like I've been telling everybody because they say, "Oh, but you know, I before Big beat Canelo, they were like, I just don't see anybody beating Benavides except uh, beating Canelo except Benavides." And I'm like, "Really? I mean, I feel like he's going to no. be there with the high guard and no, Canelo's no, going no. Canelo. Canelo's just too. He'll be getting under that high guard with those wicked hooks to the body. That, he'll be left standing. He'll be left standing in front of Canelo. The uppercuts, the, oh. the counter uppercuts. Oh, oh my god. Oh. 
Oh. Oh. <laughs> People gonna find out real quick that you know while Benavidez is very you know very good young talent, he's not who they Rip, thought he was. Rip, what do you know about Bam was with? No, he's still with Tekken Promotions. Eddie yeah. just Eddie just Eddie's uh, done a deal with uh, with Mr. Hondo who owns Tekken Promotions to be on. He's still with them. He's still they're, they're still his promoter. Yeah, that's 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 more of like a U.S. television deal, right? Just with the zone and, and match room, well, right? Well, it's, or- it's 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 you know, it, listen, Eddie's using the fighter. But listen, nobody steals a fighter from Mr. Honda. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, huh. and you've read uh, you've read a lot of. I mean, you, you you've dealt with Mr. Honda a lot, right? Or no? A little bit, yeah. I a little bit. A little bit. Yeah, sparring partners and years ago, an opponent through a, a, a mutual associate of ours. But I know Mr. Honda. Mr. Honda knows me. What's Good what's Mister Mister Honda like? Because he's like he's like the Al Heyman of Japan. You know, we don't really know much about him. No, he's he's legitimate. He's a very nice, very high class guy. His word is his bond. You don't need a contract. I mean, you, legally you need a contract, but he, you whatever he tells you, he's putting in the contract. That's what's there. There's no surprises. He's a very 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 high class guy. Uh, he's in the boxing hall of fame. Uh, for a long time now, he's just everything about him is aces. There's nothing. Yeah. There's no negativity. He he he's the Bam Rodriguez of boxing promoters. <laughs> oh wow! Okay, so that, that we know that's high praise. Uh, 